Hello, this is the first of my one hour tutorial videos I have made especially for my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. You guys mean the world to me. Now for the tutorial. I start by blocking in the eye area, area with um, my black pencil. I'm paying close attention to the lines that I've put down from my reference photo to make sure that I don't put any of the wrinkles and creases in the wrong spots. It's very important around the eye area to get these correct. So pay attention to your reference photo and your line drawing. I'm just sketching them in loosely so that I have them in place so I don't lose my way later when I actually start working with the different colours in that area. I'm using a very light hand at the moment. You don't want to press down too hard, otherwise you will flatten the tooth of the paper and you will get the intense black colour with additional layers, which you can only do if you use a light hand when colouring your, doing your layers. I've now switched to Bistro, which is a nice little brown colour and I've coloured in the iris of the eye. And I also used burnt sienna to just add some more different shades in that brown because it's not even over the whole eye. It's got a lighter area at the base and then it's darker on the top and it's got different shades of red, reddy brown and yellow brown. I just blended that small area out with um, my Erdless solvent and I used a filbert brush to just put a little tiny bit on the area. Um, I don't use a lot on the brush at all. And that just blends those colors together. I then have done a light layer of nougat uh, before going over with some more black to further darken those wrinkles just above the eye. Those wrinkles are actually quite dark in the reference photo and if you don't get them dark enough they won't quite look right so that's one thing to look for when you are doing portraits is those wrinkles around the eyes that goes with people portraits and animals they have a very dark wrinkle there I then blend it out again um, I just Seeing, having a feel for how those colours were working together for the portrait. Um, sometimes it's always a bit of guesswork as to what colours work well together. And if you're not confident getting it on your actual portrait, do a test on a bit of scrap paper nearby. Because sometimes the colours will go perfectly together to make what you're looking for. And other times you'll just need to try a few different combinations to get the look you're looking for. In this picture, the three main browns that I use are Bista, Burnt Sienna and Nougat. Uh, the Burnt Sienna has a reddish tinge to it. So I use that on the areas where it did actually come up quite red, whereas the Bista tended to be a bit more yellowy. So there are areas where that was used more. So I did do layers of most of them over the whole horse just to give that depth of colours because the more layers you put, the more um, the light catches when you look at the portrait. It's quite different to what you see on the computer versus what you see in person. The light actually goes through the different layers that you've put down and you can see all them, the tints working together to create the final colour. I've started building up the dark shadow that goes along the center of the forehead. This horse is standing so that the light is hitting it from the left. So there is quite a contrast in colors across the face. There, there's a very dark right side and you've got the quite bright, brightly sunlit area on the left. So um, I'll start building up those colors to show that graduation and even though the horse is black it's actually 
got quite a lot of those warm browns and reddy browns in the coat, even in the black areas. I've started sketching in where the veins are on the horse's face. Horses have quite distinct veins and you need to get them in the right spot because they show where the muscles are in the face and these veins are quite distinctive. I do, you do have to follow your reference photo very closely to see where they are. It's easy to get a little bit lost sometimes and not get them in the right spot. So when you are doing your line art, it's good to try and get those in the right spots and well marked out. Also, at this point, it's quite easy to lose what you've done before as you start building up the different layers. You have to keep going over the darker areas to make sure that you don't lose where they are as you build up the layers around it. As you may have seen, I just went in with some burnt sienna along the edge just to make that spot a lot more red in the photo it he's got this really red mark on his cheek which is quite striking which you only see when it catches the light he's a very beautiful horse now that i've had a few layers down i start blending it out you can see how those different shades go together when you blend. Sometimes the first time you blend, it can be a little bit hard to get the solvent to blend it without putting heaps on the paper. In those cases, you really do need more layers to get, get it to blend smoothly. I, I always find that I use more solvent when I first um, go to blend and then with additional layers of pencil on top of that, I then use a lot less solvent and especially with your last layers you use hardly any at all sometimes I don't even dip the brush in the bottle I just use what's been left on the brush drying and it's enough to move the pigment around the blending helps to get rid of the white specks in the paper and that sort of grainy look that sometimes associated with color pencil artwork and I really like the effect that it gives without a lot of effort like you don't have to do the heavy burnishing to lose that sort of graininess and I really like that look and um, my wrist a bit sore I can't really do the burnishing too much in this part I'm um, just sketching in with the black pencil and I've also used some Capult Morton Violet to sort of add a red tinge, a brownie tinge in to the black. It means that the black doesn't look completely flat. You don't want to just do straight black, otherwise it will look very flat. Um, I use this uh, the Capult Morton Violet a lot to, to add a richness to black I also use a dark indigo as well in areas and I, I at a later point I will use dark indigo on this portrait in the areas where the black has more of a cool tinge to it whereas on the face the it's all quite reds and browns coming through the black so that's why I've chosen that color to go with the black As you can see, I'm not very neat when I do the blocking in for black. I tend to, it kind of looks like it's scribbling on the video. Uh, do be careful to do an even pressure when you do that kind of scribbling, because if you have areas where you've got a dark line and a less light, a lighter line, it will show through in additional layers. Whereas when I do a a fast blocking in area I've got quite an even pressure across the whole spot and then when you just blend it out it just merges all together even though it was a little bit scribbly to start with
I had to go through and add this dark part of face in before going much further on the face because I had to get the dark half established on the face so that I could get the values right on the left side of the face. If I'd continued down the face, I would have found that the values wouldn't have been correct because I couldn't see how dark I wanted the right side of the face to go. Again, layering with both black and the Colt Morton Violet. Here I start on the ears and I'm just blocking in the black area. The inside of the ears is quite dark. So I got that in first before working on the outside a little bit. I had to up the contrast in the reference photo using Photoshop because in the photo I couldn't actually see any definition within the ear and I found that when I upped the contrast I could actually see some little shapes in there so I had to do that to help make it look a little bit more realistic. I found that if with the solid black it just didn't look quite right and there is definite shapes in the ear. They're very difficult to see because it's just a dark spot, but as you can see there, I have have done a little bit of shaping within the ear. Just blending out those layers and making the pigment just move around on the paper to fill in the white specks and blend those colours together. Now I'm just sketching in the way that the mane falls across the forehead and getting those lines in place. Again, I need to up the contrast on the reference photo so I could actually see where the mane was falling because in the photo it was just all black in that spot. Whereas in a portrait, while you're trying to copy the reference photo, you do need to still have some of the definition in those areas. Otherwise, it just is not going to look right. Just doing the same with this ear as I did with the other, adding in a little bit of definition within the ear. Right. It, it, it's more obvious at later layers than it is at this point after it especially after you blend it tends to sort of in the video you can't notice it as clearly but in person you could still see it and then I defined it a bit more in further layers as well.
this area directly underneath the mane is quite dark. It's um, got some shadow going across the ear from the ear itself where that's blocking the sunlight, but also directly underneath where the mane falls on the forehead has a very dark shadow. I found a lot of the time I spent with doing this portrait was blocking in colours and trying to get the correct saturation of colour onto the paper because black animals are quite hard to do. You have to have a lot of layers to get that saturation of pigment onto the paper so that you're not getting sort of the white of the paper showing through. At this point, I haven't actually finished the areas I've done already on the face. I've just been trying to block in the colours. Um, I've decided at this point to stop working on the face after I finish this area on the mane and to move on to the neck area because if I keep working on the face, I'm going to end up just constantly smudging black pigment across the clean area of the paper with my arm. So... Um, after this I move on to the neck. With this area on the mane, um, don't focus on individual strands of hair. You just look at the clumps and where the shadows for those clumps are and that's what I tend to work on. I don't think, oh, there's a ha hair here or a hair there. It just takes too long and it doesn't end up looking re realistic. I just focus on those clumps in the in the hair. You can definitely see a big difference on the layer after you blend from where it is before the blend. It changes the whole uh, brightness of that colour. It makes it a lot richer when you blend it. Keep adding more definition on those clumps of hair and darkening it all up. This horse is very dark, so I'm just constantly adding more dark shadows and stuff to the portrait. I make sure I don't go too dark to start with because with coloured pencil, you can always make it go darker, but it's quite hard to lighten something after you've gone too dark. So... Keep that in mind when you are drawing is keep your values lighter and then as you go on and you've got more down on the paper you adjust those values and you go back over those areas to darken them but you don't necessarily go dark straight away. Now I'm using the white luminance pencil to add a few little highlights in along the ear and the hair. That area there is actually got a little bit hit by the sunlight before the ear blocks it off and just using the white to sort of add that little highlight in there. Again, I'm just going over the ear, further deepening those shadows and that dark black colour. With black animals, you've got to just do a lot of layers of black. You burn through the black pencil a lot, especially with the size of this portrait. This one's an A3, and so it's quite large for coloured pencil. And 
I just found that I was constantly going over the black again and again just to try and get that depth of colour there. Just blending out those layers again. Pretty much the process for colored pencil is, you put light layers down, then you blend it, then you do more layers and then blend and you just keep doing that over and over until either the paper can't take it anymore or you've got to the point that you are happy with it. I love the white luminance pencil for adding highlights. It's very opaque and goes over the polychromos pencils really easily. As you can see, I actually made the area quite dark before and then I've gone with the white luminance pencil. It came out quite bright on top of that dark area that I did. Just building up this area on the face again. Just adding a little bit more of the mane there. And now I move on to the mane on the neck. I'm just sketching it in with the Vista color and getting the clumps where I know I want them. The reference photo had the neck, had the mane flicked over to the other side of the neck. And so that's what I sketched in. But at a later point in the video, I actually um, changed that. So that that's after I've blocked in the most of the neck area. I'm just layering with the black pencil. And also with the burnt sienna, I've added some reds into the mane. This particular horse, Casanova, had the most beautiful red highlights in his mane. And when they caught the sunlight, they just shimmered and it was so beautiful. I'm very excited and happy to have done this portrait of him. As you can see, I've got a piece of tracing paper underneath my hand. This just helps to prevent me smudging the paper too much. This is particularly important with such a dark animal because you've got so many black layers, dark layers. It's very easy to smudge that pigment across the paper onto the white background. It wouldn't be as important if you had a colored background, but uh, you still want to be careful with that. As with the other part of the mane, I've focused mostly on clumps of hair rather than individual strands. Hair always falls in clumps. So you focus on that and where the shadows are of those clumps. And now I've grabbed the dark indigo to add some blue into the black. That particular area on his mane 
actually had a lot of cool colours in it, not just the red. It's interesting to see the differences across the mane, where in some spots it had quite a red shine in it, and then other areas had more of a bluey look to them. And when I blend with the paintbrush, I dip the brush in the solvent and then I use the edge of the jar to wipe the excess off the brush so that it doesn't, I'm not trying to blend with too much solvent on the brush, otherwise it can smudge the pigment too much. And I think if you go over the paper when it's been wet, too wet from the solvent, it can also damage the paper. I don't have that problem usually because I make sure I don't use too much solvent. I just keep layering with the different browns with Vista and Burnt Sienna and Black and Nougat over the area it's just to keep building up those layers of colour. And here I'm going over the face of the horse with just another layer of black to darken it a little bit as well as more bister to sort of make the colour a little bit richer. Yeah I've just grabbed the Indian red and added a little bit more red into there. Yeah, I'm just going over those wrinkles around the eye again, making sure that they don't get lost as I add colour to the area. I'm just adding some more highlights in and see how well the luminous pencil goes over the dark colours. Add that nice shiny look. Keep working down the neck of the horse. This section will be, they'll get changed later on, but for now you just get to see how it was initially going to be. This area is um, the reference photo. It's just, the mane's just flicked over onto the other side of the horse, so I'm just blocking in the neck now and trying to get that dark to match the rest of the horse. I found blocking in the neck area, I found that somewhat boring to do. There's not a lot of definition um, in that area. I just was getting the colour down and making sure that I had even coverage across the whole area. And I, I used dark indigo to add a cool touch to that area as well. It, that black had a little bit of blue sort of a blue sheen to it. So that's why I use the dark indigo with the black. And just layering again over that just to get that colour even richer. Colour pencil is always just about adding layers, blending and then layers again. 
with all these layers, I am doing light layers. But there's not a, a heap of pressure in my hand. I'm getting a nice coverage of pigment, but not really pressing hard. I don't want to damage the tooth of the paper because that will prevent me adding extra layers and getting the depth of color that I want. tended to get a bit messy in this section with the blocking in of the colours as I found it a bit boring. <laughs> I didn't keep the strokes very neat. Now I used the Capult Morton Violet just to add more red. The coat was quite interesting because it had blue tints in some areas and reds in others and it was, it was a very interesting coat to draw it's not very straightforward you think oh yeah black horse there's it's just black but there's, it all depends on what that particular area of the coat is reflecting because I think some of the blues would be reflecting some of the sky and the red I think is his natural color like he's a naturally reddy brown but the blue is coming in through the reflections of everything else in the world around him At this point, I think I'm using a bit more of the blender of the solvent than I usually would just to try and blend quicker. <laughs> it gets a bit tiring doing all this blocking in of the neck area. As you can see, I'm getting even messier with my blocking in. <laughs> I am trying to keep the lines going in a general direction, though. As you can see, I'm sort of following the line of the neck rather than doing them all any which direction. The other thing to make note is to be careful of your edge of your drawing. You don't want to accidentally go over the edge of the neck because it will be hard to get that to back to white. In this area of the shoulder, I'm not too worried about the details. I get I get the general light, light reflections on the coat in the right areas um, in later layers, but I'm not too worried about details like little strands of the hair and such because it is such a a large area, but it's further back from the face and I want the focus to be on the face rather than the shoulder. So I don't need the detail of like little strands of the hair. If you put too much detail in the shoulder, then it'll actually draw the eye away from the face. There I've done a layer of both dark indigo and the Caport Morton Violet, just to you know, add more depth to the color. The more layers you put down, the easier it is to blend. Now I've switched to my larger brush that I use. It's the silver as well. 
it holds quite a lot of solvent in the brush so that it makes blending large areas quite easy. However, because it does hold a lot of the solvent in the bristles of this brush, you do have to watch that it doesn't make it all smudgy. Like sometimes when you have too much solvent, it make it doesn't blend it smoothly. It sort of does smudges rather than a smooth look. But that can be fixed with additional layers of pencil over the top. Not too hard to fix that. As you can see, some of the areas here are a little bit smudgy. I don't know if you can see, but I've actually accidentally um, blended over the edge of the drawing there, which makes it a little bit blurry on that line along the edge of the neck, which is a little bit difficult to fix, actually. So try not do that. Be a bit more careful than I was. I do take an eraser back on it a little bit later to try and fix it. But once you get that, pigment onto the paper, it is actually quite difficult to erase it. I wasn't being too careful in that point with blending. I was getting quite over the whole neck area. I wanted to get back to working on the face. Such a big expanse of the colour was getting a bit frustrating. Here I'm just trying to add in some of the colour to the, the neck. It had sort of a dark area where like the muscles go in a little bit. And that's why I'm adding more black in to get that colour looking right. As you can see, even though I've been quite messy blocking in the colour, when you start adding more layers, it actually does even it out. Blocking in some more colour over the neck, just because that those first layers aren't enough to get the deep deep colour. You need to keep adding more layers to get that colour looking really dark. The neck had quite a distinct shadow on the right side of the neck as well, which I've gone and added some black in to try and deepen that shadow a bit. And as you can see, I've actually filled in that main area to the left there where I didn't video doing it because it was one of those things where I wasn't sure if it was going to work and if I was going to ruin it by trying to add the main in, but it did work and I'm very pleased with how that turned out and it looked a lot better than having it flicked over the neck like it was before. I 
the way I did that was by taking an electric eraser and just adding in lines going down over the neck following where the clumps would go and then just adding in extra colours and, and darkening spots as well. Here I am just adding more layers to the face, darkening that area up. So even though it's in the sunlight, it was still too light before and it needed further darkening. I'll switch back to my smaller brush now because that gives a bit more control over where you blend because with blending you do have to watch that you don't push the pigment in the wrong direction. You want it to go way close to where you put it down with the pencil. That's particularly important with fur as well to make sure that you the strokes you use when blending follow the line of the fur rather than any direction because you don't want the pigment smudged in the wrong direction because it'll actually make the fur look really messy. At this point I've got my new black pencil out because my other one was getting a bit short and I'm just locking in the shadows on the nose area. I've made sure to keep all those wrinkles, the um, veins marked and don't want to lose them because they're really important to get correct. I just keep doing light layers of the black to get that first layer down, but keeping making sure I know where I'm what I'm doing and getting the nostrils in the right place. At this point, I'm blocking in the whole area of the nose. I could have done it in sections like I have in other areas, but I think at this point, I wanted to see what it would look like with the whole area. Um, sometimes it's harder to blend one area that you've done like one day, and then when you pick the pencils up the next day, it's hard to get that area to match the area you're doing then. You can do it. It's a lot easier than it is with paint, but Sometimes it takes a bit of effort to remember what order you've layered things in and how much pressure. So usually it's always a light pressure with the layers. But some areas that just you've pressed a little bit harder the day before rather than keeping a light hand when you get tired. That's what I do. <laughs> and then going over with a light layer of booster. That's actually a new pencil I've got. I I only got it a few weeks ago and I'm loving it so far. It's perfect for this this portrait. Going in with some Indian red to add some a really nice bright red spot along that line that goes down to the nostril. And more Capult Morton Violet. That's another favourite pencil of mine. It goes really well with black. And add some really nice shadows in. It's dark indigo in some of those darker areas on the nose. One thing when you are blocking in large areas, do watch your pencil 
tips sometimes um, you can get it too close to the wood part of the pencil and you you can actually scratch your paper with the wood part of the pencil and that's usually more an issue when you're blocking large areas and you're not really paying attention to the tip of the pencil just remember to sharpen it regularly I use just a little handheld uh, pencil sharpener. I think it's made by Prismacolor, and that works really well. It has two sizes for sharpening: one a longer tip and one a shorter tip. I find I like the shorter tip. I used to like the longer tip, but now I've been using the shorter tip. And it seems to be working quite well. Blending it out again. The first layer is always the hardest to blend. It uses a lot more of the solvent than other layers. Sometimes you really have to push the pigment around to get it to move. Usually that means you needed actually more layers to help with that. The more layers you put down, the easier it is to blend. I think I probably need to do a bit more, a few more layers of black to get a better coverage of pigment before blending. And pay attention to your reference photo for where all the little shadowed areas are on the nose. There's that one on the right that is a little bit deceptive in that you wouldn't automatically think that there, there would be a little shadowed area there. But the way the face is turned um, so that it's almost directly on um, has just that little indent there on the side of the right side of the face, which you have to make sure that you get in right. With my reference photo at this point, I had the contrast hyped up really high in the brightness so that I could actually see where that little indent was and to be able to put, put it in the portrait. On my original photo, this whole area was just black. There was no definition. It was in the photo once you put the brightness up, but in the initial photo, there it just it was hidden by the shadow. Just blending out again. This time I'm using a lot less solvent than the initial layer. As you can see, when you blend the black, it actually makes it a fair bit darker than what it looks like when you actually draw the pencil in. That's because a lot of the pigment just go, sits on top. It doesn't blend in in the little, uh, in the tooth of the paper. Because you know how paper it has little tiny little bumps and little valleys. And you got to get that pigment into the valleys as well. At this point, when I'm blending, I'm actually doing little tiny circles with the paintbrush and that helps to make it uh, a smoother area. Uh, if you use strokes with the paintbrush, it actually ends up um, having sort of aligned effect with the blending. Whereas the small circle 
motion helps make it a lot smoother. Here I am just adding more layers to the face just to get that colour even darker. As you can see, I've actually gone over some of the area on the right with a with the white luminance pencil to add in some little highlights of reflected light from that side. getting the, that dark area to look like a consistent colour, a smooth colour. There's quite a lot of layers of black that have to go into it to get it to look like that. Other fur types um, and colours don't take that many layers to get it to look like that, whereas because it's black, it takes a lot of layers to get it to look that dark. I'm just going back over those black veins, those dark veins and redefining them again. I'm also going over using little tiny strokes to add a little bit of the texture of his coat in. He isn't a completely smooth um, coated horse. He, he does have some texture in his coat. So using those tiny little strokes of being able to add a little bit of texture without doing too much. You don't want to do a heap of that texture because otherwise the horse will end up looking quite furry and that's not really how horses look unless it's one of those really shaggy horses. But that's not this one. So, yeah, just short, short little strokes for this one. At this point of the portrait, I'm often looking at the whole portrait, not just on the area I'm working on, to make sure that I'm getting the values correct across the whole thing. Sometimes when you get focused on one spot only, you, you kind of lose sight of the whole picture and you need to be able to take a step back and look to see if it needs additional work or additional layers in one area. As you can see, this last layer of black that I've done really makes the skin look smooth and nice, lit, nice over the nose area. Continuing blending out that last layer of black that I did. I did a whole layer of the whole face and then got, went over with the solvent to blend out that whole area. That last layer of black really made the colour come up really rich. And 
at taking care when I was blending around the eye to make sure that I didn't just blend in any direction. I did follow the curve of the eyeball and the eyelashes to make sure that I didn't flick the pigment in the wrong direction, which would make it look not quite right. And there you go, the finished portrait of Casanova. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this tutorial and thank you again for supporting me on Patreon. Bye for now.